Hi guys, we are the Moms of Furries. I am Carrie. I'm Joelle. And welcome to today's episode. We are going to be continuing our series, So Your Kid's a Furry. Congrats! Yay. And we are excited about this episode. Um, we have done a fair amount of research and we are motivated because it's something that we have been through and are con going to continue the journey. Yes. So today we're going to talk to you about Rough sheets. And this series, I guess, of episodes, we're trying to get you from being very new to the fandom to possibly commissioning a fursuit, if that's something that you choose to do in the future. And just keep in mind, most furries don't have suits. Don't feel pressured. No, but a lot of people do want the artwork just in case, or because it's just really cool to have that that visual representation of your character. Well, and you have to have something to work towards. So maybe it's not in your budget now to commission a fursuit, but you have a goal to work towards. Right, exactly. So um, so today is, it's uh, about rough sheets. Um, and really a rough sheet, a reference sheet is just, it's concept art. It's the concept of your fursona. It's, the, it's a physical representation or blueprint of that fursona. Right. And let's back up a little bit, and just because we want to make sure we cover everything, we're sure you probably already know this, and you may have watched our other videos, but a fursona is just the term used, um, it's the character that you've developed. It's the persona of your furry, right? Perfect. Your persona, which is the cutest word ever. It's so cute. Um, as is everything in the fandom. <laughs> Unless it's fierce. Ooh, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, so um, see, it's yes, it's just a visual representation, a blueprint, which is a great term to use because that's what it is, of your persona. Great. Okay, so a while back we had a lovely artist at Stardog Studios um, or Okie Pup, an Okie Pup, um, whichever way you want to refer to them, but they did uh, reference art for our kids. Yes, and luckily for us. To Connie, your daughter is an artist, so she was able to create starter art mm -hmm. to share with this particular artist to develop into the reference sheet. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you an example of a reference sheet. This right. happens to be my son's. This is Qua. Doesn't it so cute? Are you enjoying the multimedia? Since we are so high tech, um, we've decided to go old school with you guys and be a little vintage. This is called paper. This made from trees. I'm going to put in a slide of the artwork. There it is. So, I it's think, so realistic. Isn't it great? So I'm going to describe it. This, this would be what we talked about would be a more simple reference sheet, yes. but it includes the major points. So it has the front of the character, a side view, the back view, including tail if appropriate, and it has a little profile of the head and here's one small accessory. It's um, it's a neckerchief, mm -hmm. and then it has the the character's name, and it says jackal dog, and that it's male. So, and you can see the colors are represented here, but in something um, that isn't simple. So there might be more character development listed out. Right. Oh yeah, because personality traits will lend to the design as far as like the eyebrow shape and the eye shape. Or if they have different eyes that they can trade out. Oh yeah, um, um, oh gosh, nowadays, like we've been in it forever. They have seven like that, months, y'all. <laughs> the magnetic um, eyebrows that go like mean to happy. That's right, you can change out your tongue, which is very cool. That's very I like, cool. I like that That's a lot. Cool. But um, um, also more complex character may have stripes or spots. Um, or additional accessories. Yes. And you might see the colors instead of represented also in the character in little bubbles along the top or bottom yes. or side. They could be anywhere on the reference sheet. So this is just an example, but we're going to talk to you about how we got here. Yes. So for us, we started, like you said, with Takani's um, artwork. Now, she started where anyone could start, artist or not. Um, you can go online and find blanks just to go ahead and, um, if, you're, if you don't want to draw or you don't know where to start, just pick up something like this. Uh, you can get this, like, just Googling blank reference That's sheet. how I found it. And you actually found it using a different method. Right, so yeah. So it's out there everywhere. Easy to find. So if you just want to just, it. yeah. <laughs> if we can find it, anybody can find it. 
But if you just want to start out kind of playing with some color palettes, um, something like this, you could even submit to an artist and say, I really like this, but I would like larger ears or um, a curl on the tail or you know whatever but as a starting point you could definitely use something like this um, certainly and you can see here they've got the little bubbles that you could color in if your if your color palette was such that you could do that but if you if you don't have that you can you can leave it blank and ask for help so for instance um, my daughter took this um, well this is hers so we'll talk about hers she took this and copied it, blew it up a little bit, and played with it to give our artist. You can see there's some similarities, but what? But what she, she like did, did a different tail. The face, the head shape is different. Right. So she used it as a model. Right, and then adapted it. And then this is what she did for Qua, which you can see. She did this. She adapted it. She changed the ears and the tail, and this helped the artist develop this. So this is what we sent to the artist who created this. And then we communicated back was, and forth with them. That's what I was gonna say. We had a little bit of back and forth, like um, the paw pads on Takani's. We needed that change. Like we just had a little bit of discussion and then we got that. And we get it in a digital format and I think that's very standard. And then you do what you want with it. It's yours. Um, now, we, you can find examples of ref sheets everywhere. Um, but some really, really great sites that we think are probably good for new people, especially to go to, would be. Um, <laughs> I blinked on it. I'm sorry. Deviant Art. Deviant Art. That's what I said. <laughs> so Deviant Art is great. I mean, you may, you probably know that. I there's a million things on Deviant Art because it's not. I mean, it's not furry specific. It's artist specific. It's gorgeous. But if you go in and look for uh, furry ref sheets, a wealth of information. Yes, and as you will find on Fur Affinity, if you go there and do ref sheets, we got lost a little bit before we started filming this because so pretty. There's so many just gorgeous, interesting ref sheets. Yes. Well, yeah, because I'm not really into realistic um, suits. I mean, I like them. I, I appreciate all of the beauty. But there was one artist that the ref sheet itself was so gorgeous that I kind of would like that a copy of that just to have as a piece of artwork. It's and it really beautiful. is a piece of artwork. I mean, my son may never have a fursuit, but he'll always have this, and this might be something that we'll blow up and maybe frame and put on the wall just as a, as a reminder. Well, we will be doing that with a piece of art because for Takani's 15th birthday, she asked if she could have something from Neon Slushy, which is a well-known artist in the community. Um, and Neon Slushy does reference sheets, and I think the way they do their reference sheets, um, it hits all of the criteria for makers, or the majority of makers. So you can take one of their sheets and actually submit it to a fursuit maker for commissioning your suit, but that's something we'll talk about later. Right, and they happen to have a lot of experience, so for instance, if they help you develop your color scheme, you can trust that your maker will be able to find fur in those colors, which is something to think about when you are when you're beginning the process. Well, because not only um, your color selection not only affects your fursuit maker, like you know if the fur is available, it's more expensive if it's a different and a unnatural color, whatever. Right. But it also affects your reference sheet prices because. Like a simpler, uh, simpler, mm, more simple. Forgive me. Um, that's all I have to say about that. Uh, characters, they are, they, they run what? A ref sheet, 40, 50, 60 dollars, something like that. And then you can go to like your more standard characters. The standard characters I think have, they call them like having stripes or spots or, you know, a few, um, uh, I don't know, uh, natural qualities mm -hmm. or uh, just a, more detail, a little bit more detail. More detail, um, and they might have just a more elaborate color scheme, a lot more right. colors. And then you start getting into the complex characters, which could be like $150 or $100 for ref sheets that have several colors and lots of detail and or different shapes of tails, like a couple examples. So there, it's just a, such a wide range, but right. for us, we are actually going to try to commission a character design. So even though 
my daughter has a fursona. Takani is her main fursona or one of her main, she has several really. Um, she is really interested in asking Neon Slushy to design a character for her. So what she will do is submit a little bit of information. I think she's decided on like um, species. And then she'll probably give a few of her favorite colors and maybe a couple character qualities and just say, have at it. You have Crazy. artistic control. Yeah. That's really fun. And what's, what's nice in something like that, because that, that is more complex and yes. so it will necessarily be more expensive, that communication uh, as the work is in progress will be an evolution to whatever the end design. Yeah, exactly. it's gonna be really exciting to see what they come up with. Um, and so, when you are out there looking for artists, you want to make sure, so when you see the example, say you go to Fur Affinity, say you, I said a Fur Affinity, say you go to Fur Affinity, or you go to Deviant Art, and you see, you notice that the, the ref sheets that you like the best tend to be from the same artist, then you're kind of getting, narrowing down what you like. Um, but when you find your artist, and you're sure that's the person you want to go with, you have to really just cross your fingers that they are open for commissions. Right, and if they aren't open for commissions, they may reopen, so you need to look at that schedule and then be ready to apply and be ready to pay. Yes, so. When you get there. Um, once you have your artist narrowed down, um, I'm, let's talk about Neon Slushy, and I, I don't want you guys to think that we are like promoting a specific artist. It's just the process that I'm get, beginning to undertake, so we kinda wanna give you updates um, about the progress we thought it might be fun for you so right now I was supposed to apply for commissions on July 1st but I was traveling and I totally kind of lost track of it and I got in trouble from my daughter so August 1st um, Neon Slushy opens up the first of every month for I believe 20 commissions 20 so you what you do is you you go on the first and you may you fill out an application they choose 20. I don't really know what their criteria for choosing is. Some artists, they do first come, first serve. Others choose some that they're just really excited and about doing. On. Yeah, and I think that's what I would probably do if I was an artist doing that. I don't, I don't think you would be tempted to do that, of course. I think that you, yeah. So, however, you're, however they select. And then you're chosen and then they'll work on your stuff. Um, I'm not sure what their terms and conditions are right now because I'm prepared to pay up front if I have to. I'm ready for it. I already got in trouble, so I'm but prepared. That's a, that is a very good point. Read the terms of, and conditions. Make sure you understand exactly what's expected of you from this side of the contract and what you can expect from your artist. Yes, definitely. We're gonna take our mom moment now, mom moment now, and say, do not seek commissions. That means don't even apply for a commission if you are not prepared to pay for and follow all of the guidelines of the T T's and C's for that artist. Um, and know what you can expect so that your expectation is realistic and you know what you're gonna get at the end of the process. Right. It's just right. good to really understand that. You need to research, but you need to be committed. And we highly recommend to artists, which you know they don't have to take our word for it, we are not attorneys, we are not offering legal advice, but we say- We really don't know anything. <laughs> We have a lot of experience in life because we're old, so we can say that. Yes. Um, we do not recommend that artists work directly with minors because even though I think the contract is valid, it's voidable. It's not enforceable. It's not enforceable. So if the minor wants to back out, the artist would have no choice. No recourse. No recourse. So we say if you are a minor and you want something commissioned, you're going to have to have an adult do it for you. And that's just going to protect you and it's going to protect the artist and it is fair for an artist to, who's doing hard work for you to anticipate payment for the services yes they should be paid in full as you would expect to have a quality product yeah i mean that's just uh, uh, that is a an agreement yep so so okay we had to touch on that but we're done <laughs> just make sure that you do it and that you know, these people, these, some of these people, this is their job. So, you know. Okay, so moving on. Um, Neon Slushy, they open for commissions on the first. I'm going to apply. If we are not selected, 
because we choose to work with that, we are choosing to work with that artist specifically, we will wait until September 1st. If we're not chosen, we will go October 1st, and so on and so on. And so be prepared, you need to decide what's your priority. You want it fast or you want your particular artist? Right, and you know, like I said, we're not saying one artist is better than another. For us, we my daughter wants commission, and she wants the character design. Um, working with Neon Slushy, she loves their work, so that's what we're choosing to do. But I could have easily, or she could have easily said, I really like their style, let's pick out five artists in that style and apply, and then, it, you know, if we're selected at one or two, sure. work with one, move forward. Right, so okay. we're gonna document the process for Joelle and her daughter because we think it will be interesting working with this particular artist. Your experience may be different, but you will get to see what the journey is like for us. Yes, and um, speaking of them, we did want to tell you that on their website, if you go into Fursuit Translation, um, I believe it's under How to Order. Um, if you go there, it will give you a link to the Maker's Database in Tumblr. Okay, so it links to that. I think I know who created the database, but I don't want to give credit until um, I know for sure. So once we confirm that, we'll put it in the description or something. Um, but it's amazing. It goes through all of the types of characters, all of the types of suits. So if you have no idea and you just want to, you're like, I know I love furries. I, I am a furry, but I've never thought about what character. Go through there and you're going to get so much inspiration. I mean, you'll, you will be like, okay, I know that I want a plantigrade suit. I know that I want this. I like this character. You know, it's just a really great resource. Well, as Mary Poppins says, well begun is half done. So do your research. Do look around at yes. different artists. Do look at different reference sheets and help narrow in what you would like to have your end product be and then help that guide you. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us because if we don't know, we'll try and figure it out with yes. you. Yes, that is wonderful. And um, just always don't apply unless you're able to pay, right? I think that's fair. Okay, um, so our next episode, we're gonna talk to you a little bit about taking, once you have a ref sheet, taking that and starting to look for makers ooh, of your suit. So excited. We're pretty excited about it. It's just fun. Um, there, It's overwhelming, but it's a lot of fun. And we hope that we helped you a little bit today. And as always, we appreciate you uh, yes. coming by, watching our videos. We hope that you will consider liking our video. Subscribe if you don't already. Click the little bell if you want to be notified when we put a video out. And if you know of anyone that may benefit from watching any of our videos, please share. We appreciate that. Yes. And if you do want to send us a question or comment or whatever, you can do that here on YouTube or you can go to uh, our Twitter account at Moms of Furries and just send us a DM or a comment or we message. We have a website. There. We do have a website. It's MoFurries.com. So go there. You can actually contact us there or you could just go straight to our email. I mean, it, it goes to our email from the website, but if you want to go straight to our email for whatever reason, it is also MoFurries and that is at gmail.com. So thanks again and remember that we love you. Bye guys. Bye.